Hello, my name is Philip Bloom. For the past three years, I've been taking part in Movember. It's a bit of fun for a very serious reason. A bit of fun simply being we grow hair on our upper lip. Yes, we grow moustaches, something which really should have gone out in the 70s. We are going to look like porno stars from the 70s or ideally Ron Burgundy. I would always rather look like Ron Burgundy than Ron Jeremy. The reason why we're doing this is we are simply raising awareness about prostate cancer and testicular cancer and just how prevalent it is. One in nine men, roughly one in nine men, will get prostate cancer in their lifetime. And if it's not treated, it is fatal. And it is very, very treatable as long as it's detected early. So you need to get tested. The test isn't particularly pleasant, but it's important. And if you're from a certain um, age group, really 50 onwards, you really should be getting tested. And definitely younger, if you have any family members who've suffered from it, like myself, my grandfather who died from it, and my uncle who fortunately was detected um, early on and is now cured. So it's incredibly important. Um, I've lost so many friends and family to cancer over the years, different cancers and different ages from very young to old, like my grandparents, and it doesn't get any easier. Um, and most of the time it's down to simply the fact that you just weren't treated soon enough, and prostate cancer is one of those that is so treatable. If it's not for yourself, then it's for the loved ones, for the people who love you. Um, they'll thank you. My name is Francine Bloom. I'm Phil's mum. And my dad died of prostate cancer. My dad was called Daniel. He was French, of course, as I'm French. And during the occupation, uh, as he was in the army, he saved and smuggled a lot of Jewish people. I'm not sure where it took them, but I know they... It, it was about to be raided, they were about to be caught, and it just took them and to safe places. Where it was, I'm not sure where it was, I don't remember. Um, but a lot of them were saved, thanks to my dad and other people. My parents met in Normandy, you know, very, both of them, they were very poor. In a little village, my dad was a carpenter at the time and uh, he wooed my mother for quite a long time and uh, she was the one. And he was, you know, she waited for him when he was in the army. And then when he joined the Garde Républicaine, which was the main army of the president, he, they moved to Paris. My mom was a seamstress and the picture in the kitchen, you would see in one corner, it was my mum sewing. And in the other corner was my dad's hobby, repairing television and radios on top of his army job. My dad was lovely, but I would say that. But he was lovely, very jolly. Everybody loved him. Everybody used to come and visit him. He was just a very, very lovable man. I think he retired, he was in his 50s, he had enough by then. So they both went back to their roots. By that time, I was already in England. And uh, just enjoyed their retirement, really. You know, they bought this lovely house. And their joy was to have people around and um, entertaining. I used to go and visit them every two months and phone them once a week, every Saturday on the dot at 12 o'clock. So I had the phone at 12 o'clock. If I didn't, I was in trouble. <laughs> I cannot remember exactly why he went to hospital. It was for something, I don't know exactly what it was, but they spotted that he had, this prostate was really big. And this surgeon, which I would say was useless, told him that there was nothing to worry about, we're not going to remove it, we're going to leave it as it is, not to worry. So that was that. And um, 
a while later, I'm not really sure how long, maybe your dad would remember, but um, he fell ill and he went into hospital and then he kind of, they went from bad to worse. And in the end, he just, he, he had cancer. They said, I'm sorry, but you've got cancer. And it just got worse. And in the end, it was just all over his body. He went to his bones and he was in terrible, terrible, terrible pains. He used to scream. You know, I knew he was very ill, but uh, he was in hospital. He was being treated. I didn't think he was going to get better, but I knew, I knew. So anyway, I this is a five-hour drive from Calais. And I stopped after about an hour maybe at a petrol station and rang the hospital to have a chat with him. I said, I'm on my way down, you know, I'm going to see you soon. And then, and then I heard all this faffing around in the background, the nurses, and thought, oh, this is, this is uh, Daniel, Daniel Blue, uh, Daniel Guillemot, la fille de Daniel Guillemot. Um, and they had to tell me that my dad just died. And I just went to the loo and I just cried. And it took me about, I just couldn't go. I couldn't go back in the car for another half hour. And then I, I was a little bit more composed and I managed to drive there. The last picture of him is me is seeing him in his coffin because he had suffered so much and it, it, it was etched all over his face. You could see it, it's, you know, his, his cheeks were sunken. It was just not my dad. Because he died of it, my brother straight away started to have himself checked, checked out, you know, the, the PSA. And I think they were, it was medium and they, it got worse. And then, then he got it, he had it. But because it was spotted early enough, it was contained within the prostate. So therefore, they just removed the prostate and the cancer was gone. Yeah, so I'm very uh, aware of what my children should do and my nephews. They have to have themselves checked up because it's obviously in the genes. Well, once it was gone, it was like the soul, there was a soul missing. It, it just, it was just... It was really sad. I mean, you adjust, but it's just not. I used to sit, I used to sit on my dad's lap. I didn't do it on my mum's lap. <laughs> it's really funny. I was, I was very close to both of them. But my dad, I love my dad. It, it was just, a, it was a life and soul of a party when you, there was a party. It was. If we went to a party amongst English people, to just show you what my dad was like, didn't speak English, but he managed to understand and make himself understand. And he used such a flirt he was. <laughs> it was really funny. I think of him all the time, and my mum as well. I think of him all the time. I go past the picture and I stroke it. What I regret mostly is he never met my grandchildren, Natalie's children. When he died, Natalie was expecting Daniel. And this is why we called, my, uh, we called him uh, Daniel, Daniel, my dad, but in English we said Daniel, you know. So he was called after my dad. You know, he died just before, you know, he was, I think Daniel was born in February and my dad died in January, so. Didn't never had that joy. Yeah, so I've just come back from visiting the grave, and I know cemeteries are a depressing place anyway. This one in particular is, and it's heartbreaking to see it. And um, there's a picture of him that we put on it with his with his accordion, a bit faded now. And I try not to think of them underneath. To be honest, you know, it's really, really hard. You know what? It... 
och det låg klart. Så få. And this is why I'm doing it. This is, you know, last in the past we've done so well in the past few years we've raised a lot of money and it's not just about the money the money is fantastic because it does go to the research and trying to find a cure for these things and that is that is half of what we're doing it for the other half is that awareness so men will get tested so wives will tell, tell their their husbands to get tested so girlfriends will tell their boyfriends to get tested so boyfriends will tell their boyfriends to get tested everybody get tested um I'm only 41 and I'm getting tested because I have it in my family. I'm so happy and so grateful for all the companies who donated um, prizes for this, this giveaway and for the film competition. I want people to be aware of what's going on and giving away lots of stuff obviously helps. Cameras, tripods, everything. I can possibly convince people to give away from companies including my own time and doing one-on-one -on -one teaching. By seeing people seeing these prizes, first off, they learn about prostate cancer and they learn about how serious it actually is. And, you know, it, that's really the most important thing. And of course, it's, I'm trying to get people to donate money as well because that research is so important. And hey, it's a win-win situation. You're donating money to hopefully cure an evil cancer and you've got a great chance of winning a fantastic prize. There's very few things in life which are win-win. This is a win-win situation for everybody who takes part in this. That's the giveaway in the film competition. Please make a film that can raise awareness of prostate cancer. And that's one competition. And the other competition is simply make a fun video about moustaches that can entertain people and make people smile. Because that's what Movember's all about. It's about pe making people smile and raising awareness of something really, really serious. Thank you for bearing with me, and um, thanks to my mum for sharing her story. It's gonna be a, a month of mustachio glory. And I'm very excited and very much looking forward to it. And if you can do anything you can to help, I'll be very grateful.